Hello again on the Bubble listeners. We've really got to talk. According to an article on geektyrant.com, Joss Whedon is back. So what does that mean? Well, according to geektyrant.com, quote, Dark Horse's Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 12 will be the latest instalment of the Buffy vs. comic series, and Whedon will co-write it with longtime Buffy writer Christos Gage, unquote. Quote, This will be the first time Whedon has worked on Buffy since Season 9 in 2011, unquote. So for any Buffy fans, this next note may be a spoiler. It's believed that Season 12 of the Buffy comic series will most likely see the return of Angel, Faith, and fan favourite, Illyria. So with that tidbit of good news for us Buffy heads, let's change direction slightly now and get on to the topic of today's On The Bubble episode, where we're taking a look at the Season 2 fan campaign for Canadian Western and Police Procedural, The Pinkertons. Okay, here we go. The Pinkertons is a Western-style police procedural based on the real-world histories of the Pinkertons Detective Agency. Side note, incredibly massive black hole of information that you can go down with just one simple Google of Pinkerton's Detective Agency. So I warn you against that, unless you're particularly interested in North American history from the 1800s. I lost a couple of hours on reading about the real world Pinkertons. So the show itself was produced by Rosetta Media and Buffalo Gal Pictures in partnership with Channel Zero and was filmed in Gross Isle, Manitoba in Canada. The Pinkertons is probably best known, I guess, to people particularly outside of North America, like myself, as the show with the quirky artwork that comes up in the Netflix platform, it's almost impossible to scroll past the Pinkertons without thinking to yourself, oh, wait up, what was that quirky, weird-looking artwork with those three people on it? And why were they wearing cowboy hats? Which is pretty much exactly how I first gave the show a chance, So, and I'm happy I did. So further, the Pinkertons is, personally, I believe a very entertaining show, but also historically relevant as among many other things, the show pays tribute to the hiring of North America's first female private eye, a 23-year-old widow named Kate Warren. The detective upon which our series code lead, also named Kate Warren, is based. Warren is portrayed by Canadian actress Martha McIsaac in the show, and she does a really fantastic job. She's pretty much the most consistent element on the Pinkertons. So it's not all roses. The show does have its flaws, and one thing particularly is the episodes that don't feature Alan Pinkerton, who is portrayed by the renowned actor Angus McFadden, those episodes didn't really move the story forward. And although our main two co-leads were fantastic together and had a lot of chemistry on screen, a lot of the episodes where Alan Pinkerton's character didn't feature happened to be clumped together in the middle of the season And it made the middle of season one, for the lack of a better term, kind of tough going. But in saying that, the show really did go to another level across the last maybe three to four episodes of season one. And I know as a fan, it had me really excited about where the show might go in season two and beyond. But, yes, there is another but. On behalf of all Pinkerton fans out there, And I've just got to say it in case the kids are in the car or listening right now. What the heck was up with the massive cliffhanger at the end of season one? To end a season that way knowing that season two hadn't been locked in yet. Pretty much a pattern amongst the shows that leave the biggest impact on fans that I've discovered during my time with On The Bubble. And those frustrations were best expressed in reference to the Pinkertons via a comment on their official Facebook page. Quote, Are you kidding me? We just finished season one and are completely disturbed by the way the first season ended. Unquote. Yeah, so not good. Another cliffhanger for us on the bubble people. So we know the Pinkertons only got a single season as at March 2018. Show production concluded in mid-2015. The first season was left on an outrageous cliffhanger. And despite the expanding international audience, particularly via Netflix, there's been no confirmation of a second season, 
and that's pretty disappointing. And sadly, the last serious push I found for a season two that I managed to locate online was a Facebook post from January 2017. As I mentioned before, it's now March 2018, and that post was from the Pinkerton's official Facebook page, quote, Hey fans, a lot of you have been asking for a season two. There's a lot of interest on our side, as well as on the network and online side. As an independently produced series, our next step is to figure out who pays for the next season. We'll be working on it. Unquote. The rejuvenated campaign still didn't really achieve all that much, given that the goal was to move the ball down the field, so to speak, towards getting confirmation of a season two. What I did manage to find, though, and it was a happy accident that I bothered to go looking for it, was a still active change.org petition with over 1,000 signatures and still seeing new supporters even now in March 2018. In fact, it's the only time I've ever been on the page just collecting links from things I've used as references and I've actually seen the numbers going up in real time. It was pretty cool, actually. While I was reading the Renew Pinkerton's petition, it actually went from 1,081 signatures to 1,097 signatures within a couple of hours. It was, yeah, as I mentioned, really, really cool stuff. What that means to me is that there are new fans that are discovering the show all the time and digital distributions taking it to more and more parts of the world. And those fans that are discovering the show, like many of the older fans, know the show is of really high quality and they want to see another series. Hashtag renew the Pinkertons. So yes, hashtag renew the Pinkertons. I saw that one online and I thought I'd better get that one going again if nothing else. That will probably do for today. There's not much more at this point in time about the Pinkerton season two. If there is and if you happen to be here because you have an affinity for Canadian television shows like I seem to at the moment and you find yourself gravitating to Canadian made programs, I will keep you updated. In the next episode, we're actually going to take a look at two Marvel TV properties which have had a bit of an up and down fan campaign sort of life cycle, Agent Carter and also Marvel's Inhumans. And the next episode after that, we're actually going to cover NBC's Constantine, which is one of the most intriguing fan campaign journeys of any TV show ever. It's just crazy, actually, to be honest. So hopefully you stick around through the next few episodes. They're going to be really, really awesome. And at Joshua C. Liston on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook for me. Share around on the bubblepodcast.com with somebody you like who also loves TV and take care. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. For all episode resources, subscriber links and ways to support the podcast, don't forget to check out onthebubblepodcast.com. Thanks and talk to you soon.